good. It always has a slightly surreal atmosphere taking off. <laughs> that we can't see to the left because it's pretty impressive when you can see all the way down there. Yeah. See the others? Yep. You can film them, maybe. Fantastic. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? This is actually, I think, more spectacular than Klein Matterhorn, which is saying something. Yeah. The way this sort of cloud comes off these little rocks, I think, is always a, a lovely thing in the mountains somehow. Are you comfortable? Yeah, super comfortable. Can, yeah. If you want to try and get deeper in the harness, you can do it. Yeah. I'll give you a bit of a push just to get your back riding nice and that you look pretty good to me, but. film like this for a little while and then I'll change it around to uh, so it films you as well. Okay. Yeah, the ice fall here, or this broken area, is definitely more yeah. spectacular than than uh, around Zermatt. Also here, these peaks are a lot more jagged. They're kind of rounder around uh, Zermatt. That makes it also look more spectacular. I have done once, but uh, I probably wouldn't again. I'm not the most athletic person in the world, and I, I have a feeling I could easily, you know, have an accident. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <fine to me. laughs> Look at the blue of the uh, yeah of the, the lakes down there. Yeah, fantastic. That is fantastic. Uh, this this is fantastic, Sean. Honestly, this is just brilliant. It's almost like it's not really snow, but something like snow. Isn't yeah. It? Coming from where? Yeah. Above us. Look at that triangular boulder yeah, yeah, perch. That's my Toblerone rock. <laughs> it always <laughs> amazes me time to come back that it's still there. One day that's going to fall. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to be under thing it. Is when you ski, you ski right by the bottom of this cliff. You, know, you pass down to where the crevasses are. So all this must fill in then, these crevasses, I guess. Not or all of it, where it's very, very jagged over there. That never fills in fully. Yeah. But um, the rest of it is pretty filled in. You still have to be very careful when yeah. you Well, I was last in Dermak. Uh, I went on the Gorner Glacier, which is obviously just below Gorner Grant. Yeah. And it's one of the few you can go on without a guide. And because uh, they mark a trail across it, but it's still slightly. A good idea. It is. A, it is. Um, very, it's actually fascinating actually because the a bit more liberal than that. They don't bother marking trails. They don't. Go okay, to your, right. That's your problem, <laughs> sort of thing. Mind you, having said they mark a trail, I did notice some of the markers had actually fallen into crevasses, which was a <laughs> bit, which is slightly alarming. But it, it's what's amazing is that Sean, you look at a, a glacier like that one down there, and you think, oh, it's not that big, you know, I'll soon walk across there. But when you get there, I mean, it took me like probably three hours or something to get across it. Oh, the scale's just a, a, it is, it's incredible, you don't realise. You don't. I mean, just the central moraine was enormous. You know, the central rubble bit was like, you know, had house-sized boulders and it was just... Ski touring in the spring, we spent about 
about an hour fiddling our way around where the two glaciers come together. Yeah. Trying to navigate around to, through there. So it's uh, quite surprising how it I actually found the moraine. Oh, we see something interesting just about. Yep. Our shadow is to our left. Yeah. Maybe we'll get it again. And it makes a rainbow effect around the shadow. Does it? Shadow and it gets along to a cloud. It's called the rocking spot. We might just do it. Oh. Get a bit of sun on the face. Oh, yeah. There. So yeah. There is our shadow. Yeah. Not happening, is it, that one? <laughs> so let's change this around while we've got a few moments to do.